Hey, Bass Geek here. And I don't know if you know this or not, but Strike King's got their own website, and they also do sales for the holidays. That's right, geeks, man. I want to talk to you about a huge order I got from Strike King. I got it on sale, you know, back during Black Friday and some more during uh, the whole Christmas sales stuff that they did. And then a little bit after the first of the year, so after New Year's. But anyway, stocked up on a bunch of stuff. You guys, if you don't know, we're going to be fishing the MLF BFLs. We're going to be fishing the Mountain Division. I'm super excited about that. Just hoping my Camus boat is going to be in in time. Because you know how it is. Everything's backed up. But uh, if not, man, we're going to fish out old Ruby, the good old Triton. And we'll get it done. Hey, guys, check it out. For you guys that don't know, the hats are live out on the Bass Geek Gear website. Just go to BassGeekFishing.com, click on gear, and you'll end up here. You got the black on black and the blue on white. It's really the only two colors I could get right now. So uh, we, I hope to add more later, but go check them out. I hope you guys like them. We've got the beanies too. You see me wearing a video a little while back, the Bass Geek unboxing. So make sure you go check them out. Hey guys, I wanna thank all of you. As you know, the best way to support the channel is watching the channel. Every Sunday and every Wednesday, 100% watch squad, man, you guys rock. Guys, tune in, watch the videos, watch the channel. We do plan on doing a lot more fishing this year. Gonna really get into lake breakdown, gonna really dig in to forward-facing sonar for you. For you guys that don't know, I'm actually a network guy, I'm a computer guy, so I kinda understand graphs maybe a little better than the average Joe and Truthfully, a lot of better, uh, uh, probably better than a lot of pros out there. Simply because I understand, I will say it in my hillbilly redneck way, what the innards are, if you know what I'm saying. I know what, you know, the processors do, what sort of components are put in there, and, and the legitimate how the hardware works, because that's what I do. Let's jump right into this, because there's a ton of stuff. So we're going to start with some wire baits first some baits that i wanted to pick up from them this is a good looking bait this is the skipping buzz wanted to give this a try you know got them in white they come with two different trailers you guys know i'm a toad fan uh honestly you know i like their toad i'll probably put a young tip toad on it though don't tell anybody that'll probably be what comes on i do love and i have skipped docks with buzz baits forever it's a great way to get bit in the spring and post early post spawn. Picked me up two of those in white. And then I realized I didn't have any double buzz baits. So they had these. And uh, these are the Premier Plus double attraction. Figured I'd pick up some of them. You know, I like a smaller buzz bait, a quieter buzz bait, really. So, you know, maybe I get out here on some of these dirtier water lakes. That right there might be the money. Next up, I really did have to check these out. I've never used them. I'm really interested in like what a trailer would do to them. This may be something that maybe you'd put more of a straight tail trailer or a paddle tail on. I don't know really how a toad would do on here because these are the Sugar Buzz. They're a swing head buzz bait. So I'd like to put something on there that's really going to get a lot of shimmy side to side. I don't know if a toad is going to do that. Maybe the menace crawl, you know, putting it kind of side to side could do it. But I picked up three of these, all of them's in the same color. That's kind of a, got a green back and that sort of shad white belly. So it could be, it could represent a lot of different things. You know how I am. You know, I'm probably going to take one of these skirts off and try to put some sort of trailer on that's that's what i have confidence in but i'm really interested i've seen them forever and i haven't ever tried them i can't wait to give them a shot you know i fish a lot of clear water so you know i fish a lot of compact uh, spinner baits and these are the strike king you know finesse spinner baits for when it's a little dirtier i got the combo blade here but this is a more compact i love how the blade doesn't come very far past the hook but this is the gizzard shad color. So, you know, three eighths ounce there. I got this in, you know, basically a couple of different colors here. This is 
the half ounce and you'll notice these are the the two blades and you can see you know i kind of kind of changed it up these two colors in in both styles you know the tandem blade and the double willow here's your double willow this is the blue gizzard shad which i really like that color and then just for good measure i got this this is a half ounce this is a tour grade spinner bait i don't think i'd tried the tour grades yet so i just wanted to uh, give that a try that is i think called literally called blue glimmer now what's in these boxes guys when i need these i can never find them and i'm just going to be honest about them they're not super durable okay so one of the things that i fish is a lot of clear water and early in the morning during the summer you can really catch some good bass from you know that midsummer to late fall on a spinner bait now there's another time of year that this particular one's going to work and i really really hate showing you this for you guys that really like to fish clear water you know when it's overcast just barely overcast not a lot of wind you, you only need one just something to break the light up a little bit and of course you're going to throw it around cover it's not going to be you know to me spinner bait that's not around some sort of wood or grass you're just wasting time but this right here is something that i have fished for years and it seems like i never have enough of them and you cannot find them when you need them so i just went ahead and had at it now something else that i'm going to tell you about this is the way i fish them the way i fish these i live on highland reservoirs so when i'm contouring say a blow down a lay down whatever you call it um, i like to throw up shallow with a heavier spinner bait give it a couple of quick cranks and then let it dive and then i will kind of contour that drop off now you can't do that very deep with a three eighths or a quarter or a half ounce it just ain't gonna happen man i've caught so many good fish on these <laughs> i really have I've got away from throwing them for the past few years because I never seem to have one, but uh, we stocked now. So let's dig in and I'll show you what these are. So I'm just gonna pull one out. These are the bottom dwellers. They've got a thinner, flatter spoon on them or blade. So, you know, they're, they're gonna turn, but they're, go they're not gonna get as much lift. And this is the bluegill color. A lot of times bluegill around where I live, there's not a lot of flats. So what they do is they'll pull up kind of on this, I mean, small ledge up shallow that drops off the deeper water. You can throw these right up there and just let it drift down. And I'm telling you, you get rocked. Down tree lines, down brush lines, you know, uh, if you've got weed lines, you know, I've got one lake here, two lakes that's got a couple of weed lines in them that don't have shad. If you don't have shad, this right here is a killer. You guys up north, you probably already know about it, but you take this down a, a deep weed edge and you're going to catch some good ones. Now, this is three quarters. This is kind of my go-to size. Like, I've got some halves, but... That's about as low as I go in these. Next up is my other go-to size, and that is the one ounce. Now, during the summer, this is where I'm going. I'm throwing a one ounce jig, and I mean, I'm throwing it up there in a foot of water, but I'm giving a couple really two, three, four, really fast cranks of the reel. You wouldn't believe how many times I've thrown it up there, you know, because if you if if the bait splashes into the water, a bluegill, some sort of bait fish that's up shallow, they're not just going to be like, well, cool. They're going to jet. So you want you know you want it to run two, three, four, five feet, then stop, because that's what that's what bluegill, that's what panfish do. They'll run, then they'll turn around and look. And so that one ounce right there will get down super deep, especially when the water gets clear late into the summer and early fall. Got that bluegill color. Big bass eat big bluegill people. That's just what they do. And last but not least in the bottom dweller, bluegill. This is late summer. This is a big one. And there's a couple of places I go that, that, are, that have deeper grass and a little bit of current. 
and if you want to fish those outside edges of that deep grass this is one of the baits i like it's for what it is it's still a good compact spinner bait but that is one and three eighths ounce right there that's kind of a little secret of mine when it comes to spinner baits because boys and girls i do love a spinner bait that is probably the third or fourth thing that i ever learned how to fish it was literally like a texas rig worm a jig i think it was a spinner bait and then a jerk bait i think that's how it went that's that's where i started so power fishing 101 right now we got a few other things kind of in that terminal tackle section i'm going to show you you guys know i love my strike king tungsten swing heads for their versatility so i ordered me a bunch because i don't like to be out of them now i'm going to be honest with you this size right here I don't ever use it, but you know, not on my lakes, but when I travel, there's definitely uses for it. And there's maybe some uses for it on even my lakes that I haven't tapped into yet. I've got plenty of three eighths and plenty of half ounce, but these are the one quarters. Again, the tungsten swing head football head. And what I love about them is you can put whatever hook you want on there to match the bait. And it really gives you versatility to be able to throw all kinds of baits on this football head. The quarter is a little light in the pants for me for the most part, but you know, it's good to round out the collection, right? And I mean, let's face it guys, that's what me and Tackle Junkie and Debo are. I mean, we're collectors. Do we have to have all this stuff? No. But you know, when I want to go out and I want to try something, I got it. And no, it don't happen overnight. No, I ain't rich. I've been doing this stuff for years and years and years. I don't have as much as Tackle Junkie does where he's all, always selling, as he told me the other night, you know, in that live stream. I can't do that. Number one, I, probably, I just probably don't like to get rid of it. It's like my babies. <laughs> so this is a half ounce. I'll use this a little bit more, really shallow early spring. I mean, really shallow that I'm throwing the half ounce version. This is my go-to size right here. This is a three quarter. I will throw this up super shallow and work it down to pretty deep. You know, it's three quarters of an ounce. And the reason why is because even up shallow, I can work this fast. So I'm not allowing the bass to get a good look at it if the water is clearer. We're forcing a reaction by it. And, you know, in my opinion, the godfather of the swing head or, you know, whatever you want to call it, Tommy Biffle, you know, he said it best. You want to work a heavy enough weight. You want it like a crankbait. You want it to, to get a reaction by it. All of you guys, including myself, that are dragging it real slow, that's really not what it was intended for. This was intended as the ultimate weedless crankbait, is how Tommy fishes it, and how he he describes it. I have met Tommy a couple times. He's a good dude. I'm a huge fan. Got a hat up here that is signed by Tommy. Uh, Tommy is also on the shirt of fame over there, the Watson shirt of fame. Shout out to my guys, Watsons. If you're looking for Camus, that's the deal. That's the deal right there. And last but not least, the one ounce. Now, I've got a little bigger. I think they make these in an ounce and a quarter or in an ounce and uh, uh, three eighths too. I may be wrong on that, but the one ounce uh, is when I'm really out there fishing deep. All right, so now let's talk about some soft plastics. Number one, speaking of the BFLs, and God, I hate to tell you all this, but you can go back and watch the video. By the time we get to Cumberland Lake, I do think this little guy will come into play. Me and my buddy Tim just utterly smashed them up there on these. Same time of year, using them as a float worm. And, you know, the bass were coming up, getting ready to spawn. And, uh, man, we just take this little bad boy out there and twitch it around and wham, bam, thank you, man. This is a zero. It's made out of the Elastec stuff. So it's, you know, a lot like... Uh, some of the other companies are real stretchy. It floats, and they just hate that color, man. Dirty water, you know, picked up several packs in these. It's probably, honestly, my go-to floating worm now. I know most of you are going to say, Bass Geek, where you been when I tell you this? But I've actually never tried 
the rage tail worms, like the cut tail worms, the cutter worms, yeah, cut -er worms, cut -er worms. So I figured I'd pick up a couple of these and a couple of my favorite colors. You know, always, you're gonna try something new, pick up those standard colors, green pumpkin, watermelon red. That's the point of worm for me most of the time. So these are the four inch, these are your standard rage crawls. You know, you do so much with them. How many of you guys buy the Rage Chunks? You know, the the little, basically the little versions of these. I just don't see the point. I kind of buy these, and if I need them as a full-size Texas rig, I fish them like that. Or if I need them as a trailer, I just cut them down. Is there a true difference? You guys let me know. These are some hole fillers, some, some uh, stuff that basically I was running low on down to my last pack or no packs. Black and blue. <clears throat> which is one of them, which, you know, I, I'll be honest with you. Like, I don't care much for the blue. I'm, I'm okay with straight black, but I do like this. This is black blue swirl. So a little bit of different. Got three packs of those in black blue swirl. These are the four inch or standard rage crawls. Next up is probably my go-to color. And that is the blue crawl. So, you know, it's a sort of a green pumpkin, blue, purplish swirl color in there. Great color, great color. Last but not least, I don't know if a lot of you guys have tried this. You're fishing super muddy water, it's a sunny day. Put that on the back of a black jig. I dare you. You're gonna get killed. Blue Sapphire, that was a tip that Denny Brower gave away at a Bass University one time. Not the new ones back when BASS used to do them. Denny Brower, huge fan. I studied him forever trying to learn as much as I could about jig fishing. These I got for specific reasons. I do want to try them Texas rig. You'll notice that I, again, testing these out. So I kind of got that, those standard colors for crawl baits. You know guys, 90% of the time when you want to try a new bait, just just try out, think, think about the simplest of colors. Don't go, grabbing the first thing that makes you go, ooh, don't do that. That's what that bait's designed to do, but it probably won't catch fish. That color probably won't catch none. So go with your standard colors. And so these are the three inch Rage Crawls. So the, the Rage Baby Crawl. You'll see in a minute kind of what I want to pair them with a little bit, but I also want to, you know, just pitch and flip them and put them on a lot of different things, I, I think. I think these might be as versatile as the uh, the mina scrub, to be honest with you. Just a little more, a little more kick to them. So when I say the basic colors, here's green pumpkin, watermelon red, blue crawl, which is really one of my favorite colors, and you can't go without Bama crawl. Gotta have that good orange green pumpkin. It just works, especially in the fall. So we're coming up on the last bit of the soft plastics. Again, this goes back into, you know, the full size menace bugs or rage menace. I don't know. Anyway, I call them a menace grub. These are the four inch. These are what I call the standard size. And, uh, you know, just had to fill some holes. So this is the four inch and this is a couple of packs of watermelon red. Couple of packs of blue crawl and a couple of packs of watermelon seed. Now these are the baby or the rage baby menace. Now I didn't have any of these, so I wanted to kind of you know try them out. I got two packs because you know we do know that you know the rage stuff's pretty soft, but I'm okay with that because a lot of times. A softer bait gets held on to longer. So we got the, uh, again, these are three inch, a smaller bait, smaller profile. The green pumpkin. And again, you'll notice, kind of my, those go-to colors. I, I did throw one color in there that I was just like, ooh, okay, I'll give that a shot. This is black blue swirl, so black and blue. Watermelon red. And let me tell you, a watermelon red, one of these, or a rage bug, and you put just... Don't dip them. God, I hate dip. Uh, for anybody that might fish the BFLs that are coming on my boat, if you bring dip and you spill it, better be ready to pay to fix whatever it's it's just stained. That being said, take a marker. Just mark the claws. 
in the spring, bass can't stand it. Oh, that's watermelon red, by the way. That's the color you want to do that. To. This is watermelon seed. This is blue crawl. And this was the one I just couldn't, I just could not do it, uh, especially in clear water. Glacier. You know I was picking up some Rage Swimmers, right? These are the 2.75s. This is Green Gizzard. Good natural color up there. And this is Sexy Shad. Next up, the 3.25s. Probably my favorite all around size. And this is probably one of my favorite colors, especially on an Alabama rig in clear water. This is Ghost Shad. Sexy Shad. Electric Shad. So now we're going to do a few hard baits. I did not get a lot of hard baits because I've got a ton of their hard baits anyway. But again, some things that I didn't have, wanted to try. So, you know, picked out four or five colors. A couple things that I really did like that I was needing to, uh, you know, get one or two of. And we'll start right there. And we're going to start with top water. What a surprise. Swim baits and top water. My two favorite things on earth. So I picked up a couple of their KVD Splash topwater poppers. Uh, this is a great color for clear water, and it literally says clear water minnow. This is another very good color, and that is Summer Sexy Shad. Now I picked up some Sexy Dog Juniors. I really wanted to try them out. I, I really just didn't have many of them. So I wanted to pick up a few colors, and here is, again, clear water minnow. Great color for clear water. Got a good sound to it. Got a couple of rattles in there. You can never go wrong with bone. Chrome's a great one on those windy, sunny days. And this one, I just like it. It's translucent, but with the lines, it's kind of a perch pattern. But with the lines, it'll really break up the uh, profile of it. And that is Phantom Perch. Even though there's not any perch in most of the lakes that I fish, I think that will do well. Now we move into lipless cranks. I picked up a few of those. As always, you gotta have a good red. You know, that's delta red. Got that black back, that real dark red side. You know, if you ain't got blue back chrome side, I don't know what else you're throwing. Again, clear waters. These are the two taps, by the way, which I had none of, so I'm really interested in hearing what these sound like. This is uh, the natural shad fishing a lot of clear water. I really liked that phantom perch, so I went ahead and picked up one there. This is a great color in a little bit stained water, and that is a bully. I kind of call that a spring crawl, sort of mid-spring to almost the time they're on the beds. That is a great color. And when they're chasing shad, you can't go wrong with a good old sexy shad. For any of you all that's been around the channel for a long time, you'll know, hey, I am, shout out to my guy, Tackle Junkie. I am a Tackle Junkie. But I am also, there's there's two specific things, and I know you guys know swim baits are one of them. But jigs, jigs are the other. I mean, I've probably got more jigs than any human, any five humans will ever need. And I just love them. I hoard them. I pick them up from everywhere all the time and we'll probably never use a quarter of them. I just love jigs. I love jigs. Uh, I love a jig. I love to fish a jig. It, they're just, I just, they're just a comfort. They're, they're a blankie for me, right? Oh, so of course, I was running a little low on my finesse jig game. I went ahead and picked up some tour grade. These are the finesse football jigs, tour grade. These are the three eighths ounce and the one quarter. This is watermelon red. Same here, quarter and three eighths. This is green pumpkin, blue crawl, and you got to have a couple black and blues. Now, guys, I'm telling you, the mini or the, the good old Bitsy Bug, they even make this in a mini Bitsy Bug that is one eighth ounce. So, you guys that are fishing the bank, your creek anglers, you know, I'm not going to lie to you, the, these aren't very durable, but they're not very expensive either. A lot of times you can pick them up from, you know, Walmart. And these are great for you bank guys. You can easily fish them 
on a spinning combo, put your little trailer on here, kind of like what I was showing you earlier, those baby rage crawls uh, would be great for this. You know, these are very affordable, good jigs. You know, you're you're going to catch a lot of stuff on them, a lot of bass, a lot of, you know, a lot of fish on these, and especially those mini Bitsy Bugs. This is kind of what I wanted to go with. So this is the mini. This is a black. Always got to have a black. The blue crawl. Got to have those. This is green crawfish. You know, all these are quarter ounces, by the way. This is watermelon seed with a sartreuse tail. I don't see a sartreuse tail on there. I guess we'll go with it. This is a good looking color right here. It's called camouflage. Last but not least, this is green pumpkin. I mean, kind of hard to go wrong with a green pumpkin. So now these I'm really excited about. These are the Bitsy Flips. They come from a quarter all the way up to a half ounce. And so to have a real finesse flipping bait, I am super jacked about that. Good style hook in there. I got these basically in the same three colors. I got them in black. Again, quarter, three eighths, half ounce. I got them in green crawfish, basically a green pumpkin color. And I got them in watermelon seed sartreuse tail. Again, I don't see the sartreuse on here. Maybe in a little better light, we'll see it. But I got all of them in that same color. Got me some nice little mini flips. You know, I've got a jig problem, got a swim bait problem, got a tackle problem. I just love it. I love to try new things, fish new things, do new things. I just enjoy it. So guys, go check out Strike King's website. It's pretty interesting, man. Uh, you know, they got a lot of stuff out there that, you know, they don't necessarily have on Tackle Warehouse or anywhere else. You can pick it up there. I just went out and picked up a bunch of stuff and, uh, you know, it's uh, it's pretty neat, man. They they put on some good sales. So if you if you like some Strike King stuff, you know I love their crank baits. You know a lot of different stuff that they put out there. A lot of their soft plastics. So make sure you're out there and you're checking it out, lot watching for those sales because they do have them. So I like to share with you some of the gear that I like to pick up. Uh, I like to try out. You guys seem to like that. Let me know if you like it. As always, guys, questions and comments in the comment section below. You guys know I love to talk fishing with you. Like it if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. Make sure you ring that bell so you get the notifications when these videos come out. 100% Watch Squad, best way to support the channel. And as always, you guys rock.